So you want to start a photography studio and you're working on a low budget. Where to buy the gear, how to set up everything. This video is just for you, don't go away. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Benjamin, AKA Mr. Play Color. Yes, on this channel, I share with you my experience, tips and tricks that will help you better your game in photography and filmmaking. If you want to watch more of this, subscribe. Right, so let's just get straight into it. Uh, you're working with a low budget and you just want to set up your photography studio. In fact, this video is inspired by one of uh, you guys. One of the subscribers uh, sent me a message, uh, commented and, and was saying, uh, you know, for me to talk about the things that we need to start up a studio. And I thought, why not? Yeah, so um, yeah, uh, we are going to work this two way uh, there's gear and also there's location so let's start with uh, gear for gear obviously you need a camera uh, you can't do any photography without one um, there's so many entry level cameras which actually would give you some really great results uh, there's a video where we talked about cameras uh, you can go check check that out uh, but yeah uh, on the market, we nowadays have so many cameras that will, will give you some really good results uh, from a budget of about 2 million. Here in Uganda, 2 million shillings will get you a camera uh, that will give you decent results. I recommend uh, if, you're, if you shoot Canon, you can you know go with a, a Canon 6D. Uh, 6D right now, you can get it at like 2 million. Uh, if you're buying a used one, you can even get it at 1.5 or you know 1.3 million. You can convert to dollars uh, because this camera has been around for quite some time, so its value has really um, you know uh, depreciated. So you can you can get it for a good price if you're into Nikon or Nikon. Um, you can go for like a D7000 um you know and those other ranges which are closer to it uh it will still cost you about maybe 2.5 uh if it's brand new and we are talking about only the body here uh if you're into sony i think a6400 6400 uh, is a good option all these are, are about $700. Um, so you want a camera that is ranging from, you know, about uh, $500 to $1,000. Um, $1, I think that's a good price range. In Ugandan shillings, you're working with about uh, $1.5 to $2 million to $2.5. I think that's a good range for people who are starting. And if you don't really have money for a new camera, you can still get yourself a used... There's so many used cameras uh, that people... Because people want to upgrade, so they are selling off and selling rather cheaply. So you can get yourself... Even with one just 1 million shillings, you can get yourself a used uh APS-C or cropped um, sensor camera at just one million um yeah you can get yourself uh, 60d um 70d 80d yeah that's for the canon uh you can get some you know yeah especially for studio work because um when you're working in a studio it's it's a bit different you can actually get away with with uh even if it's a low-end camera uh, because you have lights in the studio that will supplement and you can pretty much you know manage uh but still i encourage you to get just the body yeah uh, and then you can see about the lenses which we are actually also getting into so number one we've said the camera you need it you definitely need a camera the other thing is you need uh lenses uh, for the lenses, if you're doing studio work, uh, you don't need many lenses. 
uh, if you want you can just invest uh, invest in just one lens um a zoom lens okay uh, for example the 24 to 105 is a common lens here in uganda uh, for many photographers uh, the biggest advantage with that lens is its uh, versatility uh, because it has a, a, a really big focal range from 24 millimeters all the way to 105 millimeters that's really a good it's really versatile and also it has a constant aperture of of um, f4 so it's a really decent lens but you can as well oh that one you'll get it for about two million if it's brand new uh, some shops will give you at two point two or two point three really depends on where you go uh, in fact you should stay uh, till this video ends because i'm going to share with you guys some of the locations which um where you can get some of these these gears cheaply here in uganda yeah um the other lens i would recommend is the 50 millimeter guys that is like my all-time favorite lens the 50 millimeter f 1.8 it's a very cheap lens you can get it for about five hundred thousand. again if you if you don't have the budget you can always buy uh, second hand guys you can always buy used if it's used maybe they will give you at 350 depending if you buy from an individual if you buy from uh, uh, shops that sell used uh, gear maybe you can get it at 400 yeah uh, when it's really in decent condition yeah uh, and guys as you know for gear you can always upgrade when you get better when your budget allows yeah so for for the lenses uh, 50 millimeter that one you must buy if you're starting your photography studio um yeah i i mentioned the 24105 that's a very good lens uh it's very versatile yeah uh, you can always upgrade to other lenses uh, one of my favorite lenses is the 85 millimeter 1.8 there's a canon version uh, there's also other third party options from other brands like yongnu uh, samyang Tamron, Sigma, yeah, and they are usually cheaper than the than the native lens. Like, from if you're shooting with um, Nikon or Nikon, their 85 millimeter is definitely expensive uh, compared to other third-party lenses. So, also if you're working on a low budget, I, it's usually a good idea to look at third-party. I actually own an 85 millimeter from Yongnu and I think it it's a really good lens uh, if you saw pictures from the Canon version you wouldn't really tell a difference maybe the difference is in the user in the usability uh, yeah that's when you notice the difference when you're shooting uh, maybe the other one is quicker slightly quicker and yeah but besides that it's a perfect lens and it it goes for about eight hundred thousand here in uganda so you can imagine buying an 85 millimeter 1.8 at eight hundred thousand. I, I think that's a really good deal yeah um compared to the two million you're going to pay for the 85 millimeter from canon hmm? you can see the difference the other thing you're going to want to invest in is um uh, lights so if you're starting your photography studio and you need uh affordable lights i would recommend um powered not battery powered i would recommend you go for um are they is it sc powered like plugging in the socket lights where you need to just plug in your socket uh, they are electricity powered basically not battery okay so uh, there's the sk400 i think it's a very good studio light uh, it will cost you about seven hundred thousand Ugandan shillings you can then convert to dollars uh, yeah many outlets now here in uganda will give you that light the sk400 yeah it's a very good light for studio uh, you're going to need to also invest in uh, a trigger 
I am a fan. I think I'm a fan of of Godox. They have some really nice triggers. Yeah, so doesn't matter which camera you shoot with. You can get yourself one of those Godox. By the way, Godox is not anywhere sponsoring this video by any means. But yeah, I just uh, find their products to be really reliable. Yeah, so you can get yourself um, SK400. There are also some other, you know, cheaper um, studio lights that you can use. And uh, buying two would be a good option because then in your studio, you can balance them out. Maybe have one as your main light and the other one is just a feel, you know, side light or something. Yeah. Um, but even if you don't have the budget, one light is okay. You can already start with just one light and still get amazing pictures. And speaking of one light, uh, there's other things you can supplement with like a reflector. I think a reflector is one of the first thing I bought um, even before I got myself a flash, a speed light. I made sure I bought a reflector. I, I got the five in one reflector, which is about um think 150,000 yeah 150,000 Ugandan shillings yeah but you can get between that and 200,000 yeah um it's a really good option because it will help you really bounce some light back to your subject or to your model um yeah it really comes in handy so a reflector is definitely uh, something you want to put in your gear yeah yes and guys the other thing is you will need to invest in soft boxes soft boxes are yeah those like umbrellas you know are they basically soften the light uh, because when you're doing studio portraits usually you want you know some really nice and soft light are uh, you know onto your subject whether you're shooting products or you're shooting are uh, you know portraits human beings uh, you need soft boxes soft boxes will range in price depending on the brand and also the size uh, but um, you can start at about 150,000 you can get yourself uh, soft boxes now there's also so many kinds of soft boxes and light modifiers for that matter uh, there's umbrella style. There's also box style, like those which are like uh, square. Um, uh, there's one I'm using here for, uh, for this video. It's uh, 80 by 80. It's uh, actually a square kind soft box. It's a fairly cheap soft box. You can get it for 180,000. Yeah, it comes with a, with a Bowens mount. And you can put a small flash behind yeah uh, many many photographers use this uh, because of course it's cheap uh, let me not use the word cheap but it's really affordable okay uh, but there are also bigger soft boxes which will cost you maybe like three hundred fifty thousand. that's for like uh, the 120 centimeter yeah uh, there's also the 90 centimeter there's the those parabolic um yeah parabolic whatever deep parabolic there's, they have so many fancy names that but that doesn't really matter uh what you want is a soft box that will sort of shape your light into something soft and nice yeah those will really come in handy so you should budget for about two hundred thousand for starters uh, but if you want the bigger ones the bigger sizes then you can uh, go for you know the octa the octa kind of uh, versions the parabolic versions yeah they will cost you about three hundred thousand and more depending also on their sizes and and shapes <clears throat> yeah uh, but um overall overall any simple softbox can do the job uh, there's even umbrellas you can as well opt for uh, uh, those uh, flash through umbrellas you know or bounce kind of umbrellas they're also a good option i remember when i really started i in fact i improvised it was so funny i got my 
<clears throat> umbrella like a usual umbrella not meant for like studio and then i got a spray silver spray uh paint uh, and i sprayed inside that umbrella that silver paint and it worked really fine like on the outside you could see a normal umbrella but inside it was silver so it was really bouncing light it worked as a good a light modifier so i mean creativity and you know improvisation is the order of the day if you're working on the budget so don't leave that option if uh, it comes to that yeah the other thing is going to be backdrops yeah um these ones of course will give you different looks for your photos for your setups uh, and uh, for the backdrops you will still need to buy stands uh, stands as well there's a system where you 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 can mount your backdrops yeah you don't have to like have no more stands where you will it might be cumbersome but you know it's also uh, cheap cheap uh, to set up so you uh, you just have i think i'm going to show you guys a picture uh, you see how these backdrops look so you can have let's say like five uh, different colors different shades of your choice and uh, yeah you definitely need backdrops yeah um, the other thing is you will need light stands of course when you buy lights you're going to need stands um, yeah you can start with maybe like three stands uh, stands are quite cheap you can get yourself uh, these are uh, you know smaller stands at maybe about a hundred thousand a hundred and fifty thousand ugandan shillings yeah there are quite many on the market so you can get yourself uh, those cheap ones you don't need very expensive heavy duty uh, unless you're having very heavy lights but when you're starting out your studio again on a budget uh, you can go for those cheap options yeah and in fact if you're buying in a set they will sell you at a, a better a better price yeah uh, i know that you can get a set for about 450 uh, i think it has um maybe like four stands yeah with a cross with a cross bar yeah just in case you need to like put your backdrop on on there yeah the other thing is <clears throat> you need a laptop uh, or a desktop uh, yeah because any photographer for sure you need somewhere you can do your post-production and uh, you make sure of course it has photoshop and and uh, whichever you know processing software you use to edit um yeah photoshop capture one lightroom name it you need um, a laptop or a desktop and install the software on it uh, now I, I i think i'll do another video talking about the ideal computer that you need as an editor as a photo as a photographer yeah because we don't use computers like every other person would use for just simple things like microsoft word you need a computer that can actually run this kind of editing software because it's really demanding on the cpu you know on the ram and things like that so i'm going to do another video that will talk about that yeah uh, you guys should be looking out for that video yeah but yeah you definitely need um a computer i would recommend maybe for starters an i5 yeah an i5 um yeah with at least at least eight uh gbs of ram yeah but you can always upgrade but that is just the bare minimum also you need memory cards guys um memory cards are, are a no-brainer again you need to invest in at least two memory cards um the size is really dependent on you it's, it's really it's really up to you but i find even 16 gb of uh you know if you're doing photos especially should be okay 32 gb should be fine for a memory card yeah um i think for the gear that's pretty much it uh for setting up a studio and then um the other big thing is location right the other big thing is location so if you're in uganda if you're in kampala here 
Um, I think getting a prime location is ideal, especially if you're primarily looking at doing photography in studio, okay? Like if you're doing studio work only, uh, you need to find a location which, uh, you know, many of your clients will, will find you easily, uh, you know, a safe place, because you see, we buy expensive gear. So you need to put in mind your location. Is it a safe environment? Is it a secure kind of uh, location that you're choosing to set up your studio? The last thing you want to happen is, you know, after setting up uh, a few weeks later, people break in and that would be too bad. So uh, always consider the security of the location and um, yeah, the ease of access for your clients. Uh, I've had situations where a client asks you, hey, so where is the studio? And you tell them and they're like, eh. I think that's far, that's too far for me, what? Uh, yeah, but also keep in mind when you build your brand to a certain point, clients won't really mind about the, the distance and and the location of, of your studio. They'll always come to you because they've seen what you do, they appreciate the craft that you do and they are willing to pay the price, okay? So they will come and they will find you uh, I think they are, at that point you're caring about how best your studio looks, whether you have the gear, whether you have, you know. Yeah, and the other thing about the studio is um, the price, guys. The price is very important. Uh, here in Kampala, many studios in town will range from 800,000 rent a month per month. If you're starting out, that's quite on the high end. You may not be able to afford paying 800,000 of rent on a photo studio, unless you're really shooting like celebrities and you know, you're getting in a lot of money. So you want to start with a, a space that maybe you're paying like 200,000 or 300,000. There are so many spaces uh, where you can put your studio. Uh, now, maybe for the question of how much studio space do I need, that is really dependent on your kind of photography. If you're shooting primarily portraits, especially like um, maybe like headshots, you know, you don't need a very big space. You just you could work with a simple room of maybe three meters by, I don't know, three meters that may that can be enough space for you you just set up your simple lights and you know you're shooting headshots if you're doing more like full portraits um then you might need a longer i think for the space you you you, you need a longer in terms of in, in terms of uh the the width and length yeah of your studio because you need to give yourself room for if you're using a longer lens like the 70 200 or the 85 you know you need some space to be able to get the full picture of, of you know full composition of someone yeah so you keep that in mind but of course the bigger the studio the more you're going to pay but um in my in my mind if you're starting out you want to pay rent of probably between 300 you shouldn't pay beyond 500,000 for rent of a photo studio if you're starting out. Anything beyond 500, when you're starting, that will be on the high end. Unless the space is really, really big and, you know, maybe you're sub-renting it and there's other people uh, who are giving you some money, okay? Yeah, uh, and guys, before I give you the final bit, um, I just want to thank you so much for you know, subscribing for, you know, watching this content. I really, really appreciate. Um, yeah, so I encourage you, if there's any video you want for me to, to make, uh, always share that in the comments and I'll, I'll try my best to see that I bring you that video. Yeah, um, but um, again, please subscribe if you're new to the channel, if you find this content really useful. Uh, yeah, and also give this video a like, guys. 
yeah it will help youtube you know promote it to many other people who need it yeah so the final bit is um for your studio you will need to bring in props yeah this doesn't have to be immediately but it can be as soon as as soon as you you know you start you know getting clients and and you start to grow your craft you will learn that oh you need for example if you're going to shoot uh, little children babies you need to get props which relate to children you know things like little cute umbrellas some toys you can you know buy some toys whether for boys or for girls you know uh little chairs uh even for adults you might get some you know props I don't know uh, like nice fancy chairs you know usually props kind of play a part in you know how you compose your pictures um yeah uh, they just give your pictures a different style altogether so you can always invest in some props accordingly as you also grow your style yes guys i need to mention that your studio space can actually work as a multi-purpose kind of you know place you can use it to shoot uh, like youtube videos you can use your space to uh, do interviews you know and things like that as much as you're setting it up for photography uh, if you get to a situation and you need to shoot some simple videos don't hesitate because it's pretty much the same space you know uh, you just have to now invest in continuous lighting what we call video lights uh, so you can be able to light like now you can see where I'm seated um, Yeah, I can use this continuous light uh, To be able to shoot this video if I took this light off then it would be really dark here uh, But yeah uh, That would actually do the job also you can invest in a microphone uh, And an audio recorder for you to be able to um, You know do this kind of uh, You know podcasts or broadcasts and and even live streaming you know you can do this with your photography studio so that is uh, something i thought i should mention uh, for people who are inclined towards video because nowadays you know many photographers start out start off as strictly photographers and then you know along the journey they start to get ideas of creating videos and things like that so yeah you just have to add on those other extra extra gears like microphones and video lights and um, yeah and you're good to go so yeah i thought that's important for me to mention as well yeah and then finally finally um uh, there's places in kampala where you can actually get all this gear uh, at a relatively low price um yeah i'm going to do a video on exactly this issue of um where you can get i'll be taking you to some of these places in town uh, and you'll see exactly where even i buy uh, gear camera gear lights name it yeah so guys again thank you so much for watching thank you for watching to the end i really appreciate your love and support guys yeah um remember to share this video like it subscribe and uh, i'll see you in the next one ciao